Hello and welcome to this very special edition of Courtroom. Joining me today on the show is one of India's best-known lawyers, Mukul Rohatki. Thank you very much, uh, sir, for agreeing to talk to us here on Bloomberg TV India. My first question, sir, you've had, you've been in this for decades. Have you ever seen the kind of litigation, the all-pervasive litigation that we are seeing today in this country? Well, I haven't seen uh, what I'm seeing in the last five or seven years. I haven't seen it in the last 30 years. And as you would recall, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and even early 2000, litigation was, uh, you know, in the known uh, uh, kind of fields. You would have private disputes, you would have general disputes with the government, you would have arbitrations, you would have cases about property, some corporate issues, and that was all. But in the last few years, we have seen a surfeit of uh, huge uh, public interest litigations which have gone into areas which were hitherto unknown. For example, we have uh, issues on natural resources. You have what is called coal gate now. You have what is called mine gate now. I would call it mine gate. You have mines now. The Supreme Court has banned all mining in Karnataka. It has banned all mining in Goa. It banned all mining five years ago in the Aravalis, in Rajasthan, in Haryana, because the court is now extending its reach beyond normal litigation. Because normal litigation will affect one, two or ten or fifty or hundred or a thousand people. But this kind of stuff is going to affect the entire corporate world. Take 2G for example. 2G then led to a presidential reference because 2G related only to Spectrum and Telecom. Then it led to the presidential reference to five judges. Whether auction should be a mode for sale or transfer of every natural resource. Then that, two, uh, that uh, presidential reference judgment came. We have huge uh, corporate issues. One of the most leading cases is that relating to Sahara. Now, Sahara has been asked to pay a, a stupendous sum back of 25,000 crores or something. These are figures which can break a company, it can break a sector, it can wipe out the entire corporate sector engaged in that business. So the, the nature is of... Is this extension of reach a good thing according to you, Mr. Murthy? Good and bad both. If the other organs of the state, namely parliament or the bureaucracy, if they don't do what they are supposed to do, parliament doesn't sit for one whole session, it is unheard of. The bureaucracy is paralyzed. Issues, troubles, disputes, constant resolution of the same is an ongoing a daily affair. It has always been seen that the other wing of the state, namely the judiciary, will always take space. When the others fail. When the others fail. It has happened you believe that this is the kind of failure you haven't seen in your career? I have never seen it. I have seen even minority governments. Mr. Narsimha Rao's government was a minority government. But there was no paralysis. The government was functioning. Right or wrong is a matter of debate. But you take a call. But here, Years have gone by, a call is not taken, there is absolute paralysis. Paralysis which was preceded by corruption. Corruption is now in the limelight, whether it's through the Supreme Court, whether it's through agitations, this, that or the other. So no bureaucrat, no minister is willing to take a decision. If the decisions are not taken, people are suffering. Where should they turn to? They can't turn to parliament, they can't turn to their elected leaders, they can't turn to the bureaucracies doing nothing. So you only turn to, if I may say so, the last frontier. The courts also have their own problems, delays, this, that. But at least you don't have complete paralysis. You may have some element of corruption in the judiciary also. I'm not saying no. But by and large, far cleaner. So people ultimately turn to it and ask the judiciary to innovate measures and do things which they were not really supposed to do. It's really a matter of policy. How you auction things, what should you do with spectrum, 
why could not the government tell the Supreme Court before the presidential reference in the 2G matchup that you should not cancel these licenses if there is no corruption but we feel as a matter of policy first come first served is fine that that's a matter of policy it's not for the court to run the government but i find that the government or its law officers are also equally weak they are not able to put forth that this is the space meant for the government or parliament there is for the you're, government you're to saying decide the conviction wasn't there not at all there is no conviction at all you do engage with india's biggest corporate groups what is the mood like is there a sense of frustration that you feel from the big indian corporates themselves about the way things are going in this country frustration you are absolutely right general apprehension as if you know there are lurking dangers they are also not able to realize what they should do how the courts will crack up on them what the government will do because the government is directionless so there is a general sense of helplessness there is no desire to plunge forward in new fields for big corporate groups i mean a corporate group may have started in spectrum it wants to go into cement a group in cement will start something else there is absolute inertia even in corporate groups and they are just kind of biding time and i can personally tell you i interact with large number of groups and i represent them whether it is birlas or tatas or ambanis or this or that they don't want to put in any further investment lot of these groups are thinking of putting investment abroad is not, that right yes not here they, they have want, more faith abroad than back in india yes abroad doesn't mean only the west it means africa it means other places if you see and isn't that unfortunate mr rohit because one of our dividends of democracy was the fact that we follow the rule of law dividend your jobs your turnover your output your industrialization your gdp everything is going to suffer if these big corporates and there is no gain saying that they are only a handful but the handful of big corporates do all this for as i'm indicating for employment for gdp this side or the other and you are saying today they are so frustrated yes that they have doubts about investing in india they have doubts about investing in india and they are actually investing in various countries including africa let me ask you now from a global investors point of view because that was the other issue which played out this whole retrospective amendment i want to get your thoughts on that do you think that was again something badly played out by this government i think it was ridiculous to say the least apart from anything else let's talk like a layman today we'll come to the law later if today i have driven my car and the speed limit is 60 miles an hour and i have driven it at 55 miles then i cannot be accused of violating the law but if somebody tells me on the road that look here even though what is displayed is 60 miles but the government or somebody decided that with effect from 1962 by a stroke of pen at 10 am today when you were going to court we have made it 30 miles an hour so we are going to chalan you for what we have decided at 10 am in the morning and it is effective from 62 so for the last 30 years whatever you have been driving we are going to penalize you every day for a speed violation of 100 rupees this is what the word of phone case is all about what next for this government now you've seen a committee being set up trying to say okay we want to overturn See, it but the is, law of the land as of today yeah is that sir this is this what is, is the way out for this government very simple withdraw the amendment you are how i mean it's it's kind of a lame duck situation you want foreigners to invest in this country the first bedrock or the minimum requirement for a investment friendly situation in any country is certainty and yet and yet we are not seeing that conviction because either you go as per your law and recover that amount absolutely which your law today right or no, wrong because now right the, or wrong allows you yeah. you're trying to change the law because and yet you're not able to because change because you have realized that the amendment was ham-handed 
it has caused criticism across the world. In an attempt to recover 5,000 crores, you may lose 50,000 crores of FDI, you will lose 10,000 jobs and therefore you change the finance minister. And the new finance minister, Mr. Chedambram, who is an expert in finance, is now struggling desperately to try and kind of come out of trouble. But waters. legally, what is the way out? Simple. Withdraw that amendment, admit your mistake, go back to parliament and say, we made a mistake, say that we made a wrong law and we shall wipe the slate clean. And that's the end of the matter. What is wrong in admitting that you were wrong? Why this, uh, you know, here and there, here and there?